Welcome to part two of our video on stacking. Um, if you haven't seen part one on the PixInsight, or if you're interested in PixInsight um, weighted batch preprocessing, then go ahead and click here. I'll leave a link to the video and watch that first. Um, I do suggest that you watch part two for sure on Astro Pixel Processor. Um, from what I gather, there's not as many people using it as there are Deep Sky Stacker or the weighted batch preprocessing in PixInsight. And I think that um, everyone should take a look at the Astro Pixel processor um, that Glenn's going to show us. It's, it's really good. I'm enjoying it. And since uh, this video was made, I have moved to Astro Pixel processor for all of my stacking. We'll have a look and i'll show i'll show you i'll show you what, what it's got and then cool. uh we can see from it. there okay bear with me i'll just get it up so welcome to astro pixel processor so um cool. at the top here are all the stages for for stacking um and it goes naught to nine there's not seven or eight i think they've left some gaps for things that they can add later um if you've got a one-shot color you put your uh, basically your bio matrix of your camera in here if you've got an astro camera and if you're DSLR you just leave it as supported and the only other thing they've got is they've got a few algorithms for different filters so if you've got a dual, dual narrowband filter you can do HA color or you can actually extract HA and O3 and separate them completely so it gives you those options with That's one nice. shot color um, but as I say we're um, going to be using our, our mono camera so under under load yeah. um we need to say it's a multi-channel filter processing so we'll leave that ticked but it's multi-session so if you've got more than one session you can uh, stack them in separate sessions but we're going to be just one session anything you hang over it will give you um information an information box to explain it so it's quite good for finding your way around so if i just put in here um and this is the uh I'm going to call it Joe's monkey head. I'm not insulting you, I promise. Um, <laughs> it was the monkey head that you, t <laughs> you took pictures of. Um, so within within uh, Astro Pixel Processor, you can see here you've got lights, and then you've got flats, darks, dark flats, bias, and then it's got the masters underneath with bad pixel map as well. So if you've got a bad pixel map made for your sensor, that can be loaded in all the time. If you nice. haven't got one, it'll automatically make you one. So if I run this and I haven't got one, oh, it'll make one. Nice. So if we start with the lights, and it's gone to the folder where I've got all of the information in, um, I can just highlight all of the hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. And it'll just say here, apply the filter header, or you can actually do them individually, but we're going to let it go with what the filters are and one of the things I like with this is it even puts it in little colors to help you out so hydrogen in red oh. oxygen in blue or the turquoisey and then dark red for your sulfur um, so it, it stacks really them in, cool. in like that and it tells me here how many lights as how many lights there are there we can then go to flats and again Oh, that's good. I've got no flats, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> hang, on, hang on a second. Yeah, I wonder what's happened there. Um, okay, I'll go and find my flats. I know where they are. I've, I've, I've got, I've got another file with them in. Bear with me. I'll go find my flats. Now, now, um, aren't you living in yeah. it? There they are. So again. Because that would that would be like for for Americans, for uh, the 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 name of that instead of flats would be house houses, houses, houses. yeah flats <laughs> yeah high rise you call them high rises don't you? <laughs> I oh, can't yeah, believe that we call rises. something okay. that's really tall and vertical a flat. Doesn't <laughs> make sense really, does it? But that's what we call them. So um, 
I've got three sets there that have gone in and obviously I take 32 of each so there's 96 in total as you can see there and if I scroll down I can actually drag this up it will give me a picture and again you can see it's got all the HA there the O3 and the S2 okay oh nice okay so it puts, puts it in lovely cool. little colour blocks so we can then go to dark flats and again I've got to go back to my original uh, my original folder here because I didn't have any flats in there for whatever reason so I want um, Joe's monkey head <laughs> so under dark flats again I was going to select them all open now with dark flats it will say all channels but we don't want it on all channels we want them on the specific channels so again we just apply the filter because with Nina if I've made my flats it'll automatically make my dark flats at the same time so it matches them oh, and they go in yeah. and then I can scroll I can even check them so you've got flats and then here look dark flats and they're the HA, O3 and S2 okay <laughs> so they're all in there it's getting busy that's really convenient because it, once you get used to that you'll know right away I, if you I miss think something. it's quite useful and then finally I'm going to put my darks in And again, I've got 32 of them. And that's going to be all channels because you obviously you don't do darks per channel. So there will only be 32 right. of them. It's all there. And then from here. So, let yes. me ask you, Glenn. Well, well, when you're done, when this is done with all the individuals, will it make masters? Yes, it'll for make you a master so of everything can... I'm making. So that'll automatically do that. So you could use yeah. the master darks. So up later. here is a very useful bit here with the. Uh, if I click on a, one of the lights, it will give me a linear uh, a, oh, a, nice. a, a sub to, to have a look at. And as you can see, there we've got the starburst on the side here. Now, um, one of the nice things with Astro Pixel Processor is you can just press integrate now, and it will just go through all the stages where it will analyze the stars, register the, the subs, um, it will calibrate the frames, it will normalize the lights, and it will integrate the lot into a stack. Um, but you can do each stage individually so you can check how it's going along so if you're worried that your integration files might not work what you can actually do is uh, run the calibration and then here we can actually look at the calibrated picture to make sure that those calibration frames have done what we want it to do to it which is a nice thing to do and then I, I, I do do wow. that sometimes and then I go to the integration so if I go up to integrate here you've got a few options you can integrate per channel integrate per channel and put them all together as one one uh, one integration or you can integrate them all together full stop and you can do the same with the sessions so if you've taken three sessions you can make it you can have three masters one for each session and then a fourth master of all the sessions put together so it's got quite a lot of options there which are quite nice um, so Very nice. what I would next do is just go to calibrate I would leave everything as standard and I would literally just calibrate mark, um, reassign masters to lights and it would just go through a calibration so what I'll do Joe I'll do that now and then I'll show you what what, what it does to the uh, subs and how we can check them okay before I press that Joe what I'll do I'm just going to load in uh, what happens if you've got a master file so if you've already built a yeah a master dark library um, a nice thing with this if you go back to the load screen you can load in a master dark here but if you were to call up a dark let's say I clicked on dark and I went into uh, my masters and I pick a master dark and I say open it'll go on all channels again it'll automatically know it's a master and you notice there it's put it in the master dark section oh that's so it, really it knows, slick it knows what you're putting really in there slick. anyway if i then go calibrate and i'm just going to push create masters and assign to lights okay if you've already got masters you can just reassign the masters to the lights much quicker but oh, nice. we're actually going to make them so we're just going to let that run through so um, if you you could actually have this do it all on its own, but what you're doing is doing it uh, manually so that you can actually see or review your calibration calibrated 
subs before yeah. you if staff If I'm them, right? happy and okay. I know that the calibration frames are good, um, I would literally just go straight to integrate and press integrate. And it would do this stage. It would just go through all the stages. If I'm not sure about my calibration frames or I want to check them first, then I calibrate. I'll do this calibration. Just check, make sure they're doing the job that they're meant to do. And then I'll jump to integrate. I rarely do any of the other stages unless I'm working on something like a mosaic. I may do that in stages because just because oh, okay. there's a lot of work there and it, there's, there's certain workflows you can go through to make it work better. One of the things that works really well with APP is you can chuck everything in for a mosaic and it will sort it all out for you. But uh, one of the best ways for it to work is to actually make each panel and then once you've got each panel made, then you put them together in the mosaic, and it and it and it builds a much a much more a much better a much more sort of uh, stable uh, mosaic. It runs much better, and it's uh, it, it it does yeah. a good job. Okay, so once you've done the calibration, you can see here, Joe, that it denotes what you've done. So it says C H next to. So it's got bad pixel map and calibration. So that means the file's been calibrated. So if I call up that HA sub oh, okay. that we had earlier, this is the linear before calibration. Okay, and you can see you've got your starburst and anything else. If right, I, your amplo Yeah, if I click and here and say calibrated, it will show me the same file, but with the calibration files applied. And you see nice. there... It's got rid of all the amp glow yeah. and the starburst. It's applied all, everything that, 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 that was going to go on. So you can jump between the two. It hasn't made the actual changes. You can see there's the linear and there's the calibrated. And then cool. that goes with all wow. the... That's, that's nice. Yeah, that that's goes with all tool. the stages. You've got the registered stage, the normalized as well. So it will show that for all of the different stages if you want to go through all of them. Okay. And, but the nice thing is you've got this done you, that does have to be done again all I would do if I was really happy with that then is I would then go to the uh, integration tool and, and do that um, there's uh, little changes you can make this is where in the registration is where you'd put mosaics if you've got different cameras and optics if you've got the same target taken with two different cameras or different telescopes you can blend them together and we did. I did something like that with our flaming star and tadpole picture because I put your flaming right. star or my flaming star and tadpole, and it put them together. Very clever. Um, and it and it was. And it was you don't very have cool. to do anything. It does it all for you. So um, anyway, if I uh, just push integrate now, it will ask me what do I want to call it, and then I just say I want to call it Joe's monkey head because Joe's got a monkey head. <laughs> and now it's analyzing the stars and it will work for all the different processes so but like you say you can work your way through each stage uh you know uh calibrate the files then i could have analyzed the stars and seen the results on the analyzing of the stars yeah. it will then pick uh based on quality a reference frame and if you look here can you see that one of if i just click on that um you'll see that one of my frames is dark this one here See, it's got a dark band for mm -hmm. it. That's the reference frame. Yeah. So that's the frame okay. it's cl it's chosen as its reference frame. And if I scroll across here, can you see it's got the word reference written next to it now? Oh, so that's yeah. the reference frame that AstroPixel Processor has chosen. And it will have done that by looking at the... Uh, it would have looked at the full uh, width half maximum of the star, the star shape. And it would have given everything a quality score. And you can see here you've got a quality score. And based on the quality so score of all to... the lights, DSS. it's picked that as the best frame for the reference. So all the others will, will be referenced to that frame. Um, I find the auto reference frame works perfectly with this. So it's already, in the time we've just been talking... Um, gone through the analyzer of the stars registered all the frames normalized the lights and it's now integrating the files so it'll put these all together now 
into three masters, one uh, HA, an oxygen, and an S2. Um, the masters come through. The, the masters are finished, Joe. That's the sulfur two. This is the oxygen three. And lastly, you've got your HA. I've got a bit of uh, artifacting around the outside there where it needs to be cropped in. But that would give me my 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 three masters. And nice. you've got different stretch parameters over here. I mean, they got like the maximum stretch, which that looks lovely, doesn't it? <laughs> so you get a bit of this light in many outside because it's the uh, Newtonian, the 130 PDS. Mm -hmm. But um, once they're stacked okay. and you do your light pollution or your background, that all goes, all of that. So um, I never worry about that. So the light pollution removal tool in Astral Pixel Processor is, is magic. It's it's amazing. It works so well um, yeah, cool. and does a, does a brilliant job. But that's how you stack in Astral Pixel Processor. And then... What I what I would most probably do with these is uh, save these as as fits files. Well, they are fits files anyway, and I can take these directly into uh, Pixie Insight, and then I've got the three files, and then I can just use them as I would, you know, just masters like you did earlier. And I would normally put these now into <laughs> Pixie Insight, and I would carry on my post processing from there. And that's what I would do with these. And if um. If you're using Photoshop, for instance, would you do a little bit of editing in Astro Pixel Processor before you yeah, set the board uh, to Photoshop? Yeah, what I would do here is I would integrate them into one, uh, uh, into a color image. Then I would crop it, and then I would uh, apply uh, light pollution removal on it. And then I would move that into Photoshop to finish it. Um, if it was a one-shot color, camera um, I would also look to uh, calibrate the star colors now calibrate star colors doesn't work very well with narrow band images so that's just that's just one of those one of those things but it just depends on how how, how you would stack that and and uh, what color what color palette right. you were going for obviously if you go for SHO you end up with the purple stars thanks for watching the video I hope it helped if it did, please give it a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next video.